about going out on uh, yesterday. One, I didn't. It's, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but it's kind of like it was building and things that I thought might go a certain way or whatever the case. God was changing things, and then in the end, I just probably finally fell at the altar and I said, "Lord, please <laughs> just fill my mouth with your words." Yeah. I can't figure it out. So it didn't look nothing like what I was thinking it was going to look like before. It was awesome. Amen. And so. What uh, what I wanted, what I will say this though is that at some point it really changed in my heart because when I was preaching Sunday I felt like more like a spirit of Elijah and, and challenging the prophets of Baal, right? But then the the next night whenever I got in prayer and I was laying in bed, I, I read two different passages of scripture. I read the prophets of Baal and the showdown with Elijah that he had with the prophets of Baal. But then I also read this account of the Apostle Paul on Mars Hill. Whenever he began to preach to the Athenians, and the Lord revealed to me that this was going to be more of an Apostle Paul speaking to the Athenian kind of situation. So what you got to understand is, is that the Apostle Paul, he, whenever he preached on Mars Hill or spoke on Mars Hill, what ended up happening, at least what I get out of it, is that he was reasoning with his fellow human citizens. You see, he had a connection to the Athenians and that he was human just as they were human. And so, but I want to go ahead and read the whole chapter and I hope you never get bored with reading the word of God. The Apostle Paul instructed young Timothy, the pastor, to pay public attention to the reading of scripture. So we're going to read this whole chapter and then we'll just briefly talk about it. But mostly I want it to be testimonial scriptures. Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. And that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Now look, let's just go ahead and slow down a second. Because you got to understand that again, the word Christ means the anointed one. Right? I'll see y'all know this. Um, but what we need to understand is that who is Paul addressing? Right now, he's addressing the Jews. The Jews were waiting on the Christ. In other words, the Old Testament prophets prophesied that he was coming. They, 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 in their scriptures, they were waiting for the one to arrive. Paul is saying, you know, he is saying he reasoned from the scriptures to them, opening and alleging from the scriptures that the Christ must suffer. He could have used Isaiah 53. If you go back home tonight and you read Isaiah 53 and then you read Psalm 22, he could have just used two, two of those passages to reason with the Jews that the Christ had to suffer. Then he introduced this thought to them, the Jesus that I preach unto you, I'm here to tell you that he is the one that we've been waiting for and he suffered just like the word of God said he would and that he rose from the dead that God the Father has placed his stamp of approval on this Jesus that I preach. Some of them believe. And consorted with Paul and Silas and of uh, devout Greeks, because there were Greeks there, a multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. I just want to say something. I was laying in my bed last night, thinking, I'm not trying to make this weird, thinking about the women in this church. I'm telling you right now, I am, uh, I am blown away, bro. I am so excited. Excited about how the Holy Spirit is and flows through women. I don't know where this is coming from, but I'm telling you, I am so ex I am so ecstatic to be a pastor that believes that women are more than just useful to the ministry of Christ. I, I can't even begin to tell you how grateful I am. We'll, we'll talk about that more later. Dude, when I see these women up here, look. The prayer covering themselves up with blank <laughs> and getting into the presence of the Lord and calling on the Spirit of God. Oh, my calling. Oh, my God, dude. Mm. All right, let's keep going. Not just a couple of minutes, but can you imagine what the Lord used? Like, what Bill said that when we got back in the parking lot after the cleaning. He, he's like, can you imagine what it must be? Like, we don't know, but what if, what if Paul saw when Priscilla laid hands on somebody? Like, did you ever see? And the kind of flows different. And I go back to this. Who did Paul give the letter to the Romans to? Yeah. To hold on. To sail the Mediterranean Sea to bring the letter to the Roman church. What's her what's his name? No, no it wasn't a man. What's her name? Phoebe. Phoebe. The Paul gave the letter to the Roman church to Phoebe. And she delivered it, buddy. She delivered it. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. 
But the Jews which believed not moved with envy. They moved with envy. See, when the, pre when the truth is preached and somebody's going to reject it, then it's going to harden their heart. And somebody will receive it, it'll soften their heart. They moved with envy and they, they took certain lewd fellows with them. You ever been locked up before? I've only been in a detention home, but you ever, you ever ran the streets before? And people that are always scheming something, they got some kind of deal they always work. That's what a lewd fellow is. He's always working a scheme. He's always, they in the marketplace, they're willing to deal with it. So that's the kind of people that they gather together of the baser sort. They gathered a company and they set all the city in an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. When they when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come here also, whom Jason received. They pulled Jason and his family out of the house just because of the fact that he let Paul come into the living room. And these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar. See, there, this day, the day's coming. Whether you're here or not is another story. But the days are coming whenever Caesar is not going to be happy. I'm talking about modern day Caesar. Whoever he is is not going to be happy with you exalting Jesus. Come the on, same right? spirit has been here. It has been here from the beginning. And it ain't going nowhere. It's only getting crazier. It's only getting madder. All right. He said, Caesar, say that there's another king, one Jesus. His name is not Hephaestus, by the way. His name is Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. And then the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming there went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica and that they received the word with all readiness of mind. See, the Lord showed me something different last night. The ones at Thessalonica, Paul preached the truth to them, and Paul preached the truth to the Bereans. The Thessalonians were not considered noble. Why? Because they did not receive the word of God with readiness of mind. They weren't even willing to go home and study the scriptures for themselves. They just said, we don't like what you're saying, Paul. This is something different than our study. Amen. And show yourself approved. But they were more noble. Why? Because they received the word with readiness of my zeal, eagerness, they were ready to receive truth. Amen? Amen? And they searched the scriptures daily, look, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also honorable women, there's the women again, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica, now look how dirty this is. Look, you're not ran Paul. Paul left you sitting. I, I forgot, I, I didn't have a chance to look and see how many miles it was, but this is a good little stretch from Thessalonica to Berea. Paul left your city, he's gone. Why are you frustrated? Look, they followed him over there. They, oh, he's going to have revival in Berea? Well, then we're just going to go stop that too. And, and had knowledge that the word of God was preached to Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go, as it were, to the sea. But Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted or escorted Paul brought him to Athens and receiving instructions or a commandment unto Silas and Timothy for to come to him with all speed they departed. Now this is where it changes. So Paul's over there in Athens. Maybe he's got a couple of people with him, but he's sitting there. It's kind of like, you know, I thought of the before Aaron whenever he went to Brazil one time. And he's sitting there in a hotel room down during the top of COVID. Sitting there, he's by himself. And like, I imagine Paul, maybe he's in a hotel room, where he's sleeping, and he's sitting there, and he's kind of by himself. Well, look what it said. While he was in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. He was, Paul, when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. He like, look, I'm going to talk to the Jews in the synagogue and I'm going to go to the marketplace and I'm going to deal with these Gentiles. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoics, these are some really important people, by the way, encountered him and some said, what will this babbler say? I don't know about you, Bill, but I saw a few people looking at me like I was a babbler. I'm just saying, there was a few out there. <laughs> Other some, he seems to be a set or forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus in the resurrection. And they took him and they brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof you speak is. 
for you bring certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Does that not still sound like the world today? Isn't everybody looking for something new? I'm just saying, what's the rage today? New age. Huh? New age. New age, yeah. Well, what's, the, what's the big thing today? I don't know. TikTok probably is dead now. I don't know. It's TikTok. <laughs> no, you got it. I mean, you know, so what was it? What was that original thing? Uh, MySpace. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's not all with MySpace. We went to Facebook. We went to. Well, oh, look. Look. And, every, and as soon as something comes alive, then it's something died. And everybody's always looking for help up. So, no. <laughs> I, you know, not to get off on this because I want to be careful, mindful of your time. But, 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 you know, I might have shared this with y'all. But I was, in, I was in the triage room at, um, you know, the hospital. And um, two of the nurses came up to me, and one of the nurses said, look at this. And there was a woman in a wheelchair, and it said, she says, I identify as a paraplegic. I identify as a paraplegic. She said, I'm saving my money, and one day I'm going to find a neurosurgeon to make it complete. He'll settle my spine, and I'll finally be able to do it. When that dude showed me that, I said, you know what the problem is here, buddy? Because I'm tired of keeping my mouth shut around this ridiculousness. So I'm about to tell you what the problem is. Everybody's looking for something and everything other than Jesus. When is somebody going to start wondering, what about Jesus? What about the Word of God? But no, everybody's looking for some new thing, and they keep on searching. And they keep on searching, and they're never finding, because the one thing that they're missing is the only thing that there is in Jesus. Yes, Lord. Then Paul stood in the midst of Marsville and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive in all things that you are too superstitious. Some translations say you're too religious. For as I passed by and behold, held your devotion, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Who therefore you ignorantly worship. Now, you know, again, I've shared this before. The word ignorant is not a bad word. It just means you're untrained, you're unlearned. We get, we're all ignorant in some areas. I was, ignorant, I was ignorant not that long ago to a lot of things. And I'm still ignorant to some things now. But guess what? If I keep a humble spirit, the Lord will teach me things. One thing I want above, well, one thing I want amongst many things is to have a teachable spirit. Yeah. I want to have a teachable spirit. I do not want to think that I'll figure it out. Amen? Have a teaching spirit, Christian. Keep a humble spirit as you search the scriptures, as you listen to other brothers and sisters in the Lord. I have learned so much from y'all as the body of Christ in the last six months of came as you get to touch me. I mean, really, I'm serious. Like, things that y'all sometimes speak out of your mouth, out of mouths that I don't even expect it to happen. I'm just like, later, I'm just like, did that even just happen? Yes, it did. God that made the world... You ignorantly worship him, declare I am he. He's the God that made the world and all things therein. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, he dwells not in temples made with hands. Neither is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needs anything. Seeing he gives breath to all life and breath in all things. He's made of one blood, some translations say of one man, all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth. And has determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation. That they should seek the Lord. If happily, they might feel after him. Imagine that. I already did. I preached before. But look. You're blind. Blind and you're feeling around. Because you're looking for something. You're listening. And you're looking and you're feeling. Because you know something's missing. But, you, but you're looking. Though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we that means that he's actually pointing. The poet said, this poet didn't know nothing about the God of Israel. This poet didn't know anything about Jesus. This poet was not a man of God. This poet was an intellectual that Paul was aware of his writing and he used that piece of information to make a connection to these people that did not know God. I'm here to tell you 
the Apostle Paul used the many of them to make connections so that he could preach Jesus. If you, he used the fact that he was a Roman citizen. He told, you know, Bill, this is kind of funny. It's in chapter 22 of Acts. Whenever he was preaching in one spot, I thought about you. Uh, not trying to make you feel weird, but uh, I thought about you because it said, it said in Acts chapter 22, after they got mad at Paul, they went and grabbed him. And the leader said, I, I believe that he must be examined by scourging. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself because he was preaching Jesus. And, and, I mean, I was thinking, examined by scourging? In other words, to put to the test. It's like a form of torture, like they waterboard people. We're going to examine the insides of you, sir. And, we, and the way we're going to do it is we're going to scourge you until you come clean with the information that we want. To, I don't want to be scourged, and I don't definitely don't want to be examined, right? And so yet at the same time, the Apostle Paul was examined through scourging. Well, fortunately, you know what he did to him? He said, wait, hold on a second. I'm a Roman citizen. Are you sure you're supposed to do this? Are you sure that you're supposed to scourge a Roman citizen that has not been convicted of them? If a connect were Jews, he became a Jew. If they were Greeks, he became a Greek. If whatever you needed to do. Now, I'm not telling you to go hang out in some barroom and blind bib with a sinner. That's not what I'm trying to tell you to do. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. If there's a way that you can make a connection and not lower your standard as a Christian, Hallelujah. Oh, let the Lord open the door if he leads you and use that to make a connection. Amen. If you fish, fish. Bring me somebody with you. Just don't buy a beer. Come on, somebody. It's not that hard to figure out that we're not supposed to. When Jesus ate and meat with sinners, he wasn't a sinner. Jesus kept himself separate and pure from the world. Because if we're just like them, then they're never going to be able to see that there's a difference and that there's a true God in heaven that sent his son to change us. Because, see, when we put our faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. And I keep saying it, but I can't get away with it. The Holy Spirit is holy. holy. Thank you, the Holy Spirit is holy. holy. And the more of him that we have in us, the more holiness he's desiring to produce in us. Amen? Look at what this poet said. For we also are his offspring. Yeah. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And these times of this ignorance, God winked. And at the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. So we, we got to back that up. Oh, yeah. At certain times, God's, God, it, it, God winked at this ignorance. But now, that means that the Buddhist is to repent. Yes. What does repentance mean? I used to make fun. I'm not going to make fun tonight. I'm not even going to say it. But listen, it's not just a simple accident. Oops, I'm sorry. Right. Repentance, right. listen, in the Old Testament, it included them taking their clothing off and clothing themselves in sackcloth. Yeah. That's like a burlap sack, buddy. And take ashes and rub it all over their hair. It would make you very disgusted because of the fact that it was hot and humid. And it would mourn. And it would create emotion because it was uncomfortable. Because they realized that they had sinned against God. I'm not recommending you go get sackcloth. I'm not recommending you put ashes in your hair. I'm recommending that you and I both repent. I'm recommending that we let God search our hearts. And when he searches our hearts and he reveals things, that we allow him access. That we don't just push it off. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? When the Holy Spirit speaks things to us and we just push it off. Yeah. And we push it off. It's not that big of a deal because we're laying under this blanket of justification. There is now therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. This is true. There should be no condemnation for the Christian. But we must walk according to the spirit. Spirit. Yeah. The Spirit is leading us down a path of holiness. The Spirit is leading us towards the will of God. Yeah. The more we submit 
submit to God, resist the devil, and the devil will flee from you. Whenever we yield to the Holy Spirit, it is pleasing to the Holy Spirit, and it wants to produce more and more. It wants to give us more and more. When we disobey the Holy Spirit, we quench the Holy Spirit. He's, he's displeased. He's unhappy with us. The Holy Spirit wants us to yield to Him. Everybody must repent. It's a change of the mind. How do you change your mind? Other than what the Word of God. That's right. The Word of God will, will set your mind right. Yes. Yes. The belt of truth. Yes. Yes. The Word of God gives us the mind of Christ. The Word of God renews our mind. Right. The world wants to impart its lies to you. The world is being led by the spirit of error. The spirit of truth wants to reveal truth to you. Amen? Praise God. Alright, so why? Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man, that's not about Jesus, whom he has ordained. You know, Jesus said, the Father has entrusted judgment to me because I judge righteousness. Jesus has been given the authority to judge the wicked because he died and shed his blood and was tortured for their sins. That's right. And if they reject his ministry and his sacrifice, yes. judgment is going to be poured out upon them. Mm -hmm. And God is a just God. Yes. God allowed the only innocent, sinless one that ever died without sin to die in place of the human race. And if they reject that, then they stand on their own. They stand naked like Adam and Eve, hiding behind a tree. But you don't have to hide, Christian. You don't have to hide. All you got to do is repent. All you got to do is get your heart right, and you will overwhelm him in his grace and his mercy. You will feel his love restore you, Peter said in the book of Acts. That with repentance comes a time of refreshing. Amen. Yeah, listen, repentance will bring revival to your heart. You want revival? It's got to start right here. Yeah. Revival has to start right here in each and every one of us. You, listen, you can do business with God at this altar right here. This is We've been praying over this altar for a while now. I'm like, I believe the Spirit of God. Obviously, the Spirit of God is moving, but you can do business with the Lord. Just like I did. I told you, all right? The Lord showed me. Daniel was a good moment, and I missed it at a point. And I was like, oh, you know what I almost did? I was like, yeah, we talked about that the other day, Lord. And, uh, and, 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 and I said, oh, okay, you're not done with me. He said, he started dealing with me, and I told you all this, and, and, and I'm not trying to make it all about me, and I was just trying to make a point. And I got myself together, and I wiped my eyes, I watched the rest of the video, and then at the end, I thought I was just going to go to sleep and pray. And the Lord said, I can tell, he wasn't done with me. He was not done with me. I told you all this story. Because you remember how I told y'all that conviction, what conviction will do, a man be walking around with his chest puffed out, thinking that he's something, and then the next thing you know, boom! The Holy Spirit will hit you, and he will drive you to your knees. And then, like the woman with the alabaster box, the next thing you know, you will find yourself crying at the feet of Jesus. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I ain't going to put on the show. I'm not that good of an actor. I'm just trying to tell you what happened. Whenever you really let the Lord do business with your heart, you'll be crying and you'll be wiping his feet because you'll feel probably embarrassed that you put, I'm sorry, Lord, I put tears on your feet. Have mercy, Lord. And it's true. It's true. You can feel the cleansing taking place. Don't ever let the Lord not have his way with your heart. Yes. Amen. And so that night, whenever I realized the Lord wasn't done with me, I said, all right, Lord, so I hurried up and got out the bed and I got on my knees. And I'll never forget it. It was just like it was yesterday. He said, no, lower. Like you told him in church. Ooh. Lower. And dude, for a second, <laughs> check this out. For a second, spirit of pride. I feel like, in other words, one of y'all would have told me that. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how bad you are. I probably would have got whooped because I'm telling you right now. And for a, a split second.
say this on video, I'll say this to everybody to say, I am so sorry if I ever acted in a way or did anything to anyone to hurt you, amen, to do anything to cause you to step backwards. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And I gotta tell you, man, what happened next week? I don't want it to. The last thing I want to do is fail the Lord. But guess what? If I mess up, you mess up too. Don't be a brother or sister that's easily offended. Yeah. Let us grow yeah. in Christ. Let us grow in yeah. Christ. Let us become mature. Amen. Mm -hmm. And let us grow. Praise God. Turn in favor to him and believed among a plea, among the which was Dionysius, the Arabic and a woman named Damaris, and others with him. What a beautiful story. Let's, let's just go back real quick. I promise you I won't be long with this, but let's just take a look at some of this. First of all, I'm just going to say a couple of things. He says, listen, I want to talk to you about this unknown God, the one that you're worshiping ignorantly. One of the things that happened, and this is not, please don't remember the word ignorant, it's not ugly. And part of the process yesterday as we were carrying the cross, there was one particular lady, two ladies, that when I was walking by, I, I, was, I was doing various things with the microphone, but it definitely did not get loud, and I don't feel like it got loud and obnoxious at any point. But whatever I said at that moment, she said, well, why, why you ain't got Jesus on his cross? So... I just smiled, and then the other person went and said, oh, well, he, you know, they, he resurrected or something. I said, yeah, you know, he's not on the cross. Oh, right. But you know, you know what that showed me? This scripture right here. That I'm telling you, if I didn't run into 100 people yesterday that told me how much they loved Jesus, wow. I didn't run into one. Wow, that's good. But they ignorantly worshipped. Because they don't know. This, this is not being ugly. This is being compassionate. I don't want to be mad. They don't know. They don't understand. They, you know why? They have not read the story of, of the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. They might have heard it somewhere, but they really don't know. And they really don't know him. Because in order to know him, they have to receive him by faith. They have to be told the truth of the story, not a lie about the story. And they have to believe in the truth in order to be saved. And when they do, they won't be worshiping him ignorantly anymore. Ignorant anymore. They will be worshiping him in spirit and truth. Yeah. Amen? So, and look, and he's also the God that made the world. You know, one of the things that the Lord's been showing me is, as I told y'all, I was driving to work the other day, and the Lord told me, he said, you, you can quit apologizing. You can quit apologizing for the way that you preach when you tell the truth. You can quit apologizing if you think you're hurting somebody. He said, let me tell you something, son. This place belongs to me. This place belongs to me. And let me tell you something. I, I'm not sorry that we walked across down those streets. I, I'm not sorry one little bit because that place belongs to God. He owns that geography. Yeah. He owns LA 70 and he owns 6th Street and he owns Cloteal and he owns Victor 2. He owns the auditorium. And look, let me tell you something else. He's the one that made the world and all the things that are in him. He's the one that gave us life. He's the one that gives us breath. You yeah. belong to him. Hallelujah.
look, bro. I don't have anything against microphone dude or megaphone dude because I saw some secret preacher, secret sensitive preacher that didn't like microphone people. Hey, Amen. I'm cool with my phone, but I'm just not cool with the way that's coming out. Yeah. Yeah. The way I do it, and then I'm not saying it's right, I'm just telling you what the Lord put on my heart. The way I do it is more like this. I'm like, hey man, what do you what do you think about watching? Like, what do you think about this TV in the park? Something like that. And one lady at that, that parade there said, well, I don't want one thing. I don't want none of that. <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of, so, so people are feeling and they're looking and they're groping. That's what one of the translations says. They're groping and they're looking. And unfortunately, many times we as believers, myself included, and all of you in this place too, have messed up, right? And we've misrepresented our Lord. Yes. We have. Yes. We don't like to admit that, but we have. We've been judgmental. Yep. We've we've slid backwards. We've done things wrong. But God is good. And he's the Holy Spirit enough to. We've got to be humble enough to recognize when we've done something wrong, and then we need to repent and bring it to the Lord and let His blood cleanse us. And then with repentance will come times of refreshing, and we will learn and we will grow in our walk with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Did I? I didn't poke anybody. Did I? Is there anybody out there saying, not me, preacher, I know we messed up. <laughs> oh, I know better than that. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your poets have said, we are also of his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art. Isn't that graven, graven by art and dance by Isn't that something? You know, he's trying to reason with Like, let's just kind of talk about this for a second. If the poet that you read says that we're his offspring, and so what he's saying is, is that we were made in the image and likeness of God, don't you think that he would look different than these golden images that y'all are forming and fashioning? Do you see the same spirit, though, that's on the earth today that forms and fashions statues? And now has named him Jesus. Mm. Now has named him the mother. Mm. Now has named him the saints of Jesus. Mm. Same spirit. Just reading <laughs> itself. It's been here the whole time. Yep. Right? And that's just one more. So in the past, God went with this. But look, now he commands everyone, everywhere to repent. Bill, would you do me a favor just turn that mic on? I mean, you can just sit in the chair if you want right there. That would be cool with me if you're cool with that. I mean, you can have a pulpit if you want it. But just kind of tell us a little bit about your angle of what you kind of experienced from your perspective. In time before we went there, we got up that mass, and we started uh, walking down uh, with the cross. Matt had the, uh, the boom box. I guess that's the correct name for it. But, which is kind of a, a sizable box. <clears throat> so uh, we're walking down, and I'm actually kind of watching and listening to Matt for the first couple of people that would come up. I've, ne I've never done uh, public ministry at all. And so I'm kind of like, okay, you know, how does it work? What do you do? You know? uh, and so I, I hear Matt a few times, you know, uh, and Matt took, get, looking through the whole period of time from the beginning until the end, Matt used a lot of different approaches with a lot of different people. Like the spirit was moving on uh, very obviously. And so I listened to Matt say a few things, and I'm thinking, well, you know what? I got word inside me. You know, I've I, 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 I read. I'm not no a per se uh, man that's behind the pulpit preaching, but I got a word inside me. Yeah. And I study. It's like, okay, I, I, I see what he's doing. I hear what he's saying. I can, I can do this. I can preach this gospel of Christ. I can do this. And so uh, I don't remember where I kind of split off from Matt. And Matt's uh, somewhere. And actually, I do remember telling him at some point in time, hey, Matt. You know, uh, do what you got to do. Uh, I, I got this. You know, I'm just going to continue. And there was times that Matt was maybe on the uh, 
left side of the street and I was on the right and sometimes we were, were not 100% receptive. There were people that you made eye contact with and they, you know, kind of gave you a stare down and turned away. I do remember talking to, there was a couple, they were sitting down and so I kind of got, uh, I was carrying the cross, so I, I kneeled down with them and I was talking to them. This is what I told them was, uh, what do you think about these two men? And I'm not really sure where Matt was at, but it's like, what do you think about these two men that are walking in front of this parade and, you know, one's carrying a cross. And I kind of illustrate myself and said, what do you think about this old man walking around with this cross? What's your thought process on it? And the woman kind of looked at me in a strange way, and then she kind of looked away. And the man was like, well, you know, I guess it's your belief, you know. If, if, and I said, well, does it seem strange to you? And he said, yes. Yes, it does. And, and so it's like, wow. So I'm walking through all these people, and, and that's what... But, it, you know, at that moment, it didn't matter. Right. It, it didn't matter at all. We were out doing ministry work. Uh, there was a gentleman that said something about, because uh, by the time we got down a pretty good ways down Victor 2 Boulevard, the, uh, the parade, the police and all the little four wheels and stuff, they were catching up with us. And so there, you can hear them somewhere in the background. The music's loud. And this guy, he said an interesting comment. He goes, wow, this is going to be a special parade because we got the cross that's leading the way. And I was like, wow. I thought that was interesting. So uh, remembering all things for me, I, to me, I kind of was, low, was looking to Matt. And there was occasions, there was a group of uh Young people, I would put them somewhere in 17 years old to probably 20, somewhere around there. Young group of people, probably teenagers, high school. In fact, there was uh, some that were more in skinny high school and uh, Catholic. Yeah, that's it. That's that picture up there. That was it. And so what I remember about that particular uh, event right there and that ministry projection that Matt's I don't have my glasses on. So, yeah, Matt's already in prayer because that guy's living. So, Matt was uh, a little bit forward of me, and I was following along. And this was like, for me, it was like a little prophetic moment that what Matt did. He took a couple steps forward because he had kind of said a little bit to him. And then he turned around, and that guy that's got his arms lifted, Matt, it was like a, I don't remember exactly, but it was just like, like Elijah or somebody pointing up to the sky and sprouting out some words. I was like, wow. It was just like a powerful little, uh, a little moment. And that was, a, a Matt did some a serious uh, ministry work right there. In fact, a couple times. It was, it was so interesting having never done this before. You know, thinking back 12 hours before we went there, uh, that night I was, I was totally good. It's like, you know what, I got this. But the next morning, I have to admit, I was a lot, not, not real bad, but I was a little bit nervous because my mind started saying, you've never done this. You can't do this. You know, that little voice in the background trying, like, you know what, it was from many years ago. It just like flowed out, totally just flowed out, just like natural. But it, it should, right? Well, you know, we sit under an anointing uh, word that's being preached and it's going into our ears and into our mind and into our heart. So there's no reason there's not a believer in here that couldn't walk. Maybe, maybe some women not being able to physically carry the cross, but as walking out and doing ministry, there's a Everybody in here has the word in them. They absolutely uh, can do it. Now, you might be a little nervous. Hey, it, it all goes away. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, um, well, praise God. So, so real quick, uh, Julie, if you, you can say a little something for us. But uh, I just want to say this. 
So first of all, Bill offered to come walk with me. I was planning on going solo. I've flown solo on some of these things before, um, and but I don't, I don't think it was it definitely wasn't the Lord's will. I can't thank the church enough for all the prayers that y'all put forward. It was completely different for sure, completely different. I could feel the anointing like at no other time. You know, that I've ever done this. And I mean, I've had ministry opportunities where I've preached for 30 kids before I had these children control the festival. But anyway, Bill offered it. I hate, you know, and I was like, you want to do that? So anyway, thank you, Bill, for that. Thank you, church, for praying. Julie and Pam um, offered to drive behind us in the vehicle. And I was like, oh, no, I didn't Because I didn't know what that was going to look like. And I'm so glad you didn't. <laughs> I know, yeah, I see that, but praise God, I'm glad you didn't listen to me, because that was a blessing, that was a blessing, that's where the scripture came from, okay, I'm taking me in here to talk to me now, but I'm glad you didn't, and they had cold water, and they followed us, and look, we didn't have to carry a water bottle, and rolled the, the wind down, go, 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 Share from your angle or whoever from your angle what you what you saw or what you experienced. Can you have one? Yeah? Okay. Well, me following, you know, I was just like trying to be supportive. Before before y'all got out there, me and Pamela were driving up and down. She was like, we're gonna just call the Holy Spirit out here. We're gonna ask the Holy Spirit to move before us ahead of everybody, you know, like yes. ahead of them. And so we would go driving through the crowds, praying and everything, and she was doing most of the prayer. I was trying to watch the room. <laughs> but, like, it just felt so, like, good because, like, at first people were staring at us and looking at us like we was crazy, and I was like, yeah, we're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be crazy, you know? We're crazy for Jesus. That's we right. love doing this. And it just felt good. And then whenever y'all got out there and was moving, it was like, we gotta make sure no cars hit them. I didn't. I, at one point, I thought one man was gonna get angry. I was about to start honking my horn. <laughs> but I was like, this ain't gonna go down like this, <laughs> you know. But we just <coughs> felt it was like so refreshing to see the people receiving it. Like yeah. it just felt so good to. A lot of them was rejecting it and making you make some kind of comments that sometimes after we would walk. Forward, y'all would see their responses because right. we didn't get to see what went on. Right. Whenever y'all would go away, sometimes people would like, would be like, did you see what it just did? And then we would come by and we would wave and they'd be like, yeah. <laughs> 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 but you know, it kind of made them humble a little bit, you know, like, like, oh man, God saw me. <laughs> you know, but, but that, the first guy that y'all prayed for, after y'all walked away and we came, turned the corner to get on the road that y'all were going down, that first man, it touched my heart so much. I was like, if that's the only person that, it, you know, that it helped, it's worth it to yeah. see that man. Yeah. He was rubbing his eyes like that and he was so touched. He was yeah. crying and y'all were all the way to the next block and he was still right there. Like he was, like he was very touched. He was moved. Like he was like balling, you know, like he couldn't get a hold of himself. He kept doing this, wow. and it felt, and it just felt like God, was, His presence was still there on him. Yeah, like you yeah. can see it. Praise wow. God. It, it was just, Hallelujah. it just was amazing to see God's work. You know, some of them, like there was one guy that you prayed for. He was with some of these, like look like kind of like bikers, but not that rugged. They were sitting on the back of a truck or sitting on a chair behind a truck. You remember that guy? You prayed on that one guy, and then the other people were trying not to look at you. Don't <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, don't yeah. look that way. You know? <laughs> but then when you when you walked away after you prayed on the guy, they started laughing, and that man was like, like he didn't want to like don't be laughing, uh, no, don't be no. laughing on Jesus. You know, like, yeah. I just got prayed on, bro. <laughs> that particular guy right there, just to let you know, I said because he was saying that he was. 
as I gave my testimony, I talked a little bit. Not that I've ever really, that I know I've dealt with depression and anxiety, but I know I've been depressed. And it's, whatever, I told my story and anxiety. You know, the enemy tried to attack, and he started sharing it. He has to take all these medicines. And I said, well, let, me, let me pray. And I laid my hands on him, and I started praying. And, that, and he gave, he took authority. And yeah. said, the Lord is going to minister to you. And then his friends were back there laughing. Like, ooh, ooh. And I said, I said, brother, God is going to change you. And I said, and you, sir, are going to see God change, change this man. And God is going to use that to affect you in some way. Yeah. And so that's what we have on there. I believe that. I believe that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt with that particular thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It made it, it makes sense to the way he looked at it. Yes, yes. yes. Praise God. Well, so look, let me just go ahead and show y'all a couple of pictures. Um, so, this is me and Bill, like, walking, just kind of like in the crowd, you know, I got the little microphone thing. Bill, let me ask yourself, I'm just curious, like, with that little microphone thing that I was using, what do you, like, what did you notice the most of what I was doing? Like, I, mean, I have something in my head that I just wanted to see if that, because I didn't realize until later when I was laying in bed, I think I did more of this than I did of anything else. Oh. Anything in particular? Right? Yeah, through the mic. Preach the gospel. Yeah. But what else was I doing? They were praying. And did, they were, did I, I sang almost the whole time. <laughs> Some of y'all were being so good. And I, I was in the end, I sang the same song. It was one of the ones that we used to sing to the little girls. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. That, Jesus. That, that's right. That's so yeah. Jesus. Did I say more yesterday than I've ever said it all? Because you know what I'm thinking was? Let me tell you what I'm thinking was. Dude, they're over here giving glory to false gods. They don't really know that they're giving glory to false gods, but they're giving glory to false gods. And I, one of my prayers was, Jesus, I desire for your name to be broadcast in this atmosphere. I am going to go through these streets and we're going to release the name of Jesus because I believe there is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus. All right, so that was me and Bill walking. I don't even know where it was, but look at Bill right there, boy. Down on his knees doing ministry with the people, amen? amen. And here's I was walking up, well, I don't even know what that was. And here we were, here we were again. I had the little mic right there. I don't remember this particular occurrence. There's Bill, I showed that one earlier. Look at Brother Bill down there. I think Pamela said, look at Pastor Bill. She said, <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at Pastor Bill ministered to them people. Look, at the very end of the parade, I'm over here talking to some young girl, and, and I'm trying to talk about the Lord, and she, I felt like she was kind of like, you know, stiffing me a little bit, and so I kind of like just turned from her, it's okay. So, and then I see Bill, he's over here laying a hand on some little, somebody, they had cancer, they had been did chemo, yeah, he's got his hands on this girl, like praying for him, like, please God, this brother praying, he was praying, prayer, prayer, so I go, I go join in in the prayer, and then, and then we said, hey, to bring me in. I said, let me give you my number. And I said, oh, no. I said, I, I said I'm not trying to get you your digits. That's probably that old. I said, that's weird. Let me get your friend's number. And I said, hey, his name's Blaine. I said, Blaine, can I get your number? And then so I said, I, I texted him my number. And I said, do you want me to take you out my phone? Because I'll take you out my phone. No, you can leave it in there. I'm like, all right, well, now whenever we have another youth thing, I'm going to holler at you, you know, whatever it takes. But, uh, yeah, I was hoping that if she really did feel that way, that she would call us. But that was just one particular. This, this particular situation right here, this was a, this was a, 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 mo a, a memorable uh, moment. I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but when I first walked up to him, I just said, man, what, what, do, you, what do you think? What do you believe? You know what I'm saying about God yeah. and about all this stuff? What, what, do, you, what do you believe is going to happen when you die? Do you, do you just believe that that you're just not going to exist anymore and that there's nothing to worry about? Or do you believe God is real? Do you, do you believe in eternity? He said, I don't even know what to see. I really don't. He said, I, I kind of like looked into it. I have looked into it. He said, I have really searched. I promise you I have. I'm just, I'm just not convinced. And so I told him some of my story about how God changed me. And I said, but I do want to tell you, man, Jesus preached hell. He preached hell, and this hell was a real place. It was a place where the fire and the quills and the worms of the dying, that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But I have good news for you. God the Father sent his son to die for your sin. And he, 
change me. And I just don't want you to go the rest of your life without somebody giving testimony to the fact that Jesus changed you. And so that was that. But this is the one that I really want to talk to you about. That's the occurrence. Um, and then we'll, we'll close. Maybe with the singers and musicians, y'all can come up. But you see, I want to tell y'all what happened right here. So I'm walking up, Bill's behind me, and I just have to stop. And these are actually some Morgan City kids. We also minister to some Central Catholic kids. I gotta tell you, those Central Catholic kids, when I talk to them about Jesus, now I don't know if they just bamboozling me every year, but I have preached to 30, 40 of them kids at a time at the Shipping Patrol because they're always so respectful. I'm just saying, they really are. But these kids here, some of the ones on the on the tailgate, this is a cool story. Check this out. So then Bill didn't know what was happening. He just saw me give this prophetic word. Oh, let me just say this other thing real quick. When I was in prayer, before we were going, the Lord explicitly told me, son, they're out there. They're, they're hiding out there. And what he was talking about was those that had already been touched with the truth of this gospel. And that they were, and that they were hiding. And he said, let them know that even though they're hiding, I see them. And he said, let them know that I'm calling them home. And that my nails are hanging. And my arms are open. And they're welcome. Let them know I'm calling them home. And that they're welcome. Because I want them to come home. And so the Lord showed me that. For two days before I went out there. And there was this one woman. I wanted to tell you all this too. I never knew her name. I never even walked up to her. She was about as far as Jessica is from me right here. And there was another door. And he but he would look up at me every now and then, so I didn't feel like I was completely irritating him because I would tell people I'm not trying to irritate you. <laughs> and he would look up at me almost like, and he would kind of like acknowledge me to let me know that I was okay. And I said, sir, the Lord wanted me to, to say to some people that, that he knows you're here, that, that there's people that have already been touched by the word of God. And he's calling people home. And all of a sudden, out of my peripheral, I could see that woman. And she had some big old sunglasses on. And I could tell she was crying behind her sunglasses. I'll tell them in detail. And I said, he's, he's calling people home. And I appreciate the fact that I could see it on her face. And the Lord was dealing with her. And I said, I love you. And you're welcome. You're welcome. And then, and so then I went on. But anyway, this story right here is so cool. So I'm walking by. And I'm like, would you, I almost passed them up because I didn't stop at everybody. I almost passed them up because they were looking a little scoffy, you know, scoffers in the last days. And, it was, and they were laughing. And so I went off. I went off on my testimony. I went off on what I used to do, what I was about, what I used to run around, and that Jesus changed my life. And then all of a sudden, the dude with his hand raised in the air, you couldn't, you couldn't script this any better, my friend. And he was lit a little bit. He was a little bit lit up. His face was all red from that alcohol. He walks up to the end of that blue truck right there on the bed, and he looks down at me. John 16, 33. <laughs> and I said, for in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. And he finished it. For I have overcome the world. And he went back and he sat in the back of the truck. So I'm sitting there talking to his friends again because all that happened, and I'm sitting there talking to his friends, and then all of a sudden, that's when Bill walked up. The Lord, I said, look at you. Look at you. You've been hiding that in your heart. Yes. The Lord has called you. Yes. Don't you dare yes. live your life and not let these friends of yours know about that seed of truth that is in your heart right there. Young the man, God is calling you home, and he said his nail scars hands are open and they're waiting and it's calling you home. He wants you to know that he loves you. Don't you hide that truth in your heart, sir. And then I said, hey, can I pray for y'all? And so we prayed and I would have never known. Hey, y'all got me right here. I would have never known that that young man raised his hands in the air. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for every seed of the gospel, Lord, that was sown yesterday and many that were probably watered. And we understand that you are the Lord of the harvest. We are workers in your kingdom, oh Lord God. We're not building our own. We are build, helping to build yours, oh Lord God. You are the Lord of the harvest. Seal those seeds, Lord. Bring an increase, Lord God, in this end days. Lord, pour out your spirit upon this earth, Lord. Pour out your spirit in this church. We plead with you, Lord. Cause our souls to be in anguish over souls, oh Lord God. Bring people into the kingdom. Bring the backslider home, Lord. Those that are far away, Lord. Those that love you, Lord God, yet they have, for whatever 
reason they have walked away, Lord, please, by the power of your Holy Spirit, draw them home. Let's worship the King of Kings, saints. Let's end this service with worship to our King. Thank you, Jesus.